almost immediately after getting the 997, the 996 knew it and decided to start acting a fool. So you weren't aware of my latest project, the camera's sitting on it right now, it is a crashed 997 Turbo. It was used primarily as a race car. Since I bought this thing, I think the 996 got jealous. It definitely liked having the E36 as a garage partner better than the 997 because, well, it got check engine light pretty much right away. And also the driver's side rear wheel started making some noise. I'm not sure what that is. So we gotta dive into all that today and figure out what's going on with the car and hopefully get it to stop having a temper tantrum. Even if some issues are popping up with the car, at least it is looking really, really good. I'm so happy with how it came out. We just gotta fix those minor details, which of course is taking away time from the huge project, the 997 Turbo. I got it back from the alignment shop and I've been driving it a ton ever since. But the other day I was going to the gym and when I was pulling into the parking lot with the exhaust being pretty quiet, just coasting, I heard this No idea what that is. But it sounded like it's coming from the driver's side rear wheel, so gotta investigate that. Also have some upgrades from Renline, a couple different upgrades that are going all around the car. The first thing we're gonna do is some interior modifications from Renline. This car is 22 years old, so it has some wear and tear and especially the fact that the previous owner didn't take care of this car at all. So you saw in a previous episode, I installed Renline's carbon fiber armrest. Mine were really beat up, shocking. Now, they just came out with the door handle trim to match. And by match, I mean it matches perfectly in every way. And you'll see that in a bit. So let's get those unboxed and installed. I also enlisted some help today. My nephew Hoyt is coming to help work on the car and the truck and the garage. Hi. I am Hoyt. <laughs> so if you see him sprinkled throughout a couple different videos, we did a lot of work in a day and he helped out a ton. And for you guys who asked, yes, I now have 997 merch on the website and yes, it gets you entered to win the Milwaukee Electric Impact and Wrench giveaway. And that ends the end of August so your time's running out. And for standard sizes, these are only 25 bucks. Bad news on the merchandise front, uh, you know the Porsche shirts? Well, all of a sudden, I can't sell them anymore. So to backtrack a little bit, I use Printful to sell all my merchandise. I don't keep anything in house here. Um, they take care of the order, they take care of shipping, they do all that, that way I don't have to deal with it. And I know you guys will get your stuff. However, I've been selling that Porsche shirt for months now with no issues. Well, I created one for the 997 and all of a sudden Printful red flagged it. They're like, hey, this is a copyright infringement. It's too close to Porsche and you can't sell it. So a couple of you guys ordered those, I gotta refund your money. But in the meantime, I'm gonna try to fight it because I've been selling the 996 version for months without issue. And I don't, I don't see how this is a copyright infringement. You have Porsche and you have Porsche. They're completely different words. I don't know, it's frustrating. So that's why if you look on the website right now and you don't see the Porsche shirt, well, you know why. I always keep my obd do scanner in the car because well, you never know when you're going to get a new check engine light in this car. Oh, interesting. These are different codes now. Now we have P0410 and P1411. Air system A and secondary air injection system. That's interesting. Those are new. Oh, going to have to look into that. What's weird is, I thought for sure it would be related to the EVAP. And this might be, but this is a different code this time. Like I said, this car is just angry because I got the newer version of it with a cooler interior and more power. That's going to be an interesting one to figure out what exactly is wrong with this car. It's running great. No problems at all. Took it on a little over an hour round trip the other day. Got 20 miles a gallon. Was running great. Riding great. Just has to be stubborn, doesn't it? Anyway, let's move on to some mods. very very high wear item in 996 interiors are the door handle pulls and that's going to get fixed today on mine my driver's side one is really bad
first on the list and easiest on the list are these beautiful brand new door handle covers in carbon fiber. These are from Renline, of course they make the best stuff and these will match perfectly with their carbon fiber armrest, which I already have installed in the car. Show you. So I got these. Oh. See how they see how they match strong. this? Yeah. And the other side, like this one's nice, but the other that side is pretty beat up. Oh. So that's what we can we can put on first. Yeah, just oh. nice. Now pop the new one on. Yep, look at that. What do you think? Looks better than the original. Oh, that's nice. Look at how even, like, even that lines up. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Yeet it in there. The other side you'll see is much, much more beat up. Beautiful, wow. Way nicer, and that lines up yep. just like the other one. Nice. Renline really went above and beyond. I mean, the fact that Fitment is so good, and especially the fact that they even made the carbon fiber weave line up with the armrests is incredible. Now that the simple part is done, it's time to move on to something that you guys gave me a lot of crap about ever since I installed my new wheels. made it clear and you weren't wrong that the wheel studs on my current car with the current wheels are just too long they don't fit right the black doesn't look good and you guys are right so I got a set of titanium studs from Renline I got 60 millimeter for the front and 35 millimeter for the rear admittedly I probably should have went with a slightly shorter stud for the front you'll see what I mean a little bit later In the holy horn. Why is that so tight? Using my lug nuts. Couldn't find these earlier, but now I did. Now I can torque them. Red line says 30 foot pounds, so that's what we'll do. And I'm not doing Loctite.
Once I got the system figured out, you'll see it was pretty quick getting them all in there with the impact. I use the impact to tighten the nut against the other nut, spin the whole stud in there, and then I do the final tightening with the torque wrench, torquing to 30 foot-pounds. Now, I didn't use Loctite because Renline suggests using a specific type of Loctite, which I don't have, and they say if you don't have that Loctite, don't use any at all. Oh yeah, that's much better. Just right if you ask me. And that is their shortest option too. I wanted to weigh these, but I just, I just don't know if it's even gonna register on this thing. Like even up right here, let's put all 10. 1.2 pounds, and that's all the front. Now let's see the rear. It's already installed. We'll do half the rear. 0.4 pounds. Make sure. Right yes. 0.8. So 0.8 for five of the old ones. And 0.4 for five of the new ones. Wow, that's crazy. These are half the weight. That's wild. That's almost half a pound per wheel in the rear and even more in the front. That's amazing. Once I got the wheel situated on there with the new studs, I realized I ordered studs too long. I should have went with the 45 millimeter, but still look better than what was on there and they're titanium and way lighter. I just had to do a quick rinse and repeat on the driver's side. Everything went nice and smoothly over there. And then it was time to move on to the rear and take care of that pesky issue as well as install the titanium studs back there. I really had no clue why I was getting the noise from the driver's side rear wheel area. So the first thing to do obviously was lift it up and start spinning the wheel and tire around and just listening. I don't know if you guys can hear this. I don't know what that noise is, but it's really, really prominent when I'm driving and very annoying. If I had to guess, it's just the rotor rubbing on the, the back plate, but we'll see. Yeah, well, that guess was very wrong. Oh my god, I have no room anywhere. Further investigation definitely revealed it wasn't just the rotor rubbing on the back plate, it was something deeper. So the next step was simply to pull the caliper, pull the rotor, and take a look inside. But I found the problem. The spring somehow came basically unhinged from that and bent itself. So hopefully I can bend it back, put it in there, and this was just causing a squeaking noise. Not good. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad it wasn't worse than that. I tried my best to bend it back into place, but the spring was just too far gone. So Olight sent me this awesome little flashlight. Great just for carrying around on the pocket or using a clip. 
And it also has a built-in laser. You just flip the switch there. There you go. Laser, flashlight, and it gets really bright. <laughs> Not a paid ad or anything, but they sent it to me, so I figured I'd say something about it. I got this after I did the fix on the car, but I'll be using this a lot, especially on like interiors and like engine bays and stuff, because you can just get around in here, hit turbo mode, get super bright. Great little flashlight. I have a link for it below. You guys can get a discount on it. I found the issue, guys. So that's why when I rotated the wheel tire, the rotor, etc., it, it had that weird like ticking noise every once in a while. I really didn't suspect that's what it was, but it imploded, and uh, yeah, and I got to wait for the new one to show up. So luckily, it's an easy fix, but it's still annoying. But in the meantime, I can finish putting the titanium studs back here and get that all wrapped up. Also, side note: the fix on my axle is still holding up great. My nut was 100% tight; hasn't come loose at all but I since we're back here and I remember this isn't an OEM nut so I ordered an OEM axle nut so I'll install that while I'm back here and have this torn apart as well and we'll get that all wrapped up put it back together and hopefully it doesn't make noise anymore and yeah, everything will look better and you guys won't yell at me for having super long studs though I wish I got shorter studs in the front all of the stud installation wrapped up. Now I just had to wait for the other parts to come in. The new axle nut, the OEM axle nut, and the parking brake pad springs. First, the new nut showed up, much nicer than the one it had in there. Obviously, it's OEM, and it has the built-in washer, which I did not have. And then, a few days later, the new springs arrived, along with some parts that the 997 needs as well. Those are for the 997. These are what I needed. I didn't need three of them, but I figured might as well have some extras laying around. Yeah, those look right. See, this one is not right. She gone. Looking closely at the spring, you can actually see a wear mark on that second to bottom coil, and that's where it was rubbing on something. I don't know if that was causing the noise or the brake pad being loose itself, probably a combination of both. the new OEM axle nut with included washer and a couple of new parking brake shoe springs. So yeah, let me take all five minutes to throw this back together. This project can be done pending that I go for a drive, spin the wheel and everything sounds right. I'm gonna put just a tab of Loctite on there, just to be sure. The axle nut still spins on there really, really nicely thanks to those fixed threads. Now, hopefully these springs aren't too tricky to get in there. Still not exactly sure what caused it to come out in the first place. Five minutes, huh? I got the bottom one in super easily, but that top one, I just could not push it in far enough to actually hook the whole way through the hole. I could get it in and it would stay, but as soon as I jiggled it, it would pop back out, which obviously you don't want. That means it's gonna pop out as soon as I start driving. Why won't that stay in there? So I fought with it with a few more minutes, used a different combination of tools, and I got it in there nice and seated. Shouldn't be popping out. So now I just had to wrap everything else back up on the rear end, listen if it was making any weird noises, and then it's time for a test drive. Thankfully, no more noise.
time for a test drive. I think my own sweat went on the lens. Blech. Oh, can't forget about a quick tool cleanup and organization as well. Can't believe in dirty tools laying around. It just, it, it doesn't sit right with me. Really, I just need to roll this thing out of the garage and I'll be able to hear and tell right away if I fix the problem. Noise, 100% fixed. Still have to fix that check engine light though.